Hi everybody, I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the laboratory test D-dimer. So let's get into it. So first of all, what is it? It is a protein fragment that is made when a blood clot dissolves in the body. So if we think about like a normal injury that occurs, so there's a tissue injury, maybe you've got a cut on your arm. What happens right away is hemostasis. So a blood clot is formed to prevent you from bleeding too much. And that's great in the moment, but we don't need it forever. Once it's served its purpose and the tissue has healed, now it needs to go away. So there's something called plasmid. This comes and breaks down that clot into the protein fragments, an example of which is D-dimer. So this test is used to find out if people are having issues with clotting. So in this scenario, it's a good thing, right? It's normal, we expect this to happen. But this is used to figure out if people are having blood clotting issues without an injury. So it's being formed without an injury, there's no blood clot, but you're still releasing fragments. Or they're not breaking down when they're supposed to. So that's the point of this test, to see if you have a clotting disorder. While this test is helpful, it cannot show you exactly what kind of clotting disorder you have or where it's located in the body. Some of the clotting disorders that this can possibly mean, a DVT, so a deep vein thrombosis, a pulmonary embolism, DIC, which is disseminated intravascular coagulopathy, and then a stroke. So it cannot tell you specifically what you have, but it can lead to follow-up testing. So those follow-up tests that they do could include a Doppler ultrasound, a CT scan, or a VQ scan. And that's gonna let us know what's going on. This can also be used after you've been diagnosed with a clotting disorder to help monitor treatment. So for example, your patient has DIC, and their D-dimer levels are still elevated, that's letting you know the treatment isn't working as well. For this one, there is no universal normal range, which in a way is kind of a good thing because it's one less thing you have to memorize in nursing school, one less number. But this is something you need to pay attention to though when you get your lab results because there is no universal normal. And then a couple of other things I wanted to point out Yes, this is for uh, coagulation disorders, clotting disorders, but it can be elevated in other instances. So in obesity, pregnancy we know, pregnancy you have more blood volume, it's a hypercoagulable state, so it makes sense that it would be elevated in pregnancy. If you've recently had some sort of surgery or trauma, if you're on estrogen treatment, we tend to see it a little bit more elevated in the elderly, and people who have rheumatoid arthritis oftentimes will have false positives for this. So that's just something extra I wanted to point out that some people, even if they don't have a clotting disorder, you might see elevated levels of this. So that was my video. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you in the next one.